Spreadsheet fans, this latest Airtable feature is for you. Airtable now supports pivot tables natively inside of Airtable interfaces. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours build portals, apps, and integrations for your business. Now, previously, Airtable did support pivot tables that had an extension. You could add the extension to your workspace, but it was always a little bit clunkier. It wasn't a native feature, and I always feel a little bit better when this is supported in the core product. This is now something that is part of interfaces, and interfaces, as we all know, is central to Airtable strategy going forward. Pivot tables are useful for aggregating data in your reports. And if you haven't made one before, that's okay. We'll show a couple different examples that might apply to you. So our first example is for a CRM. We have lots of different opportunities in our system. And rather than looking at all of the opportunities, we want to understand for each sales rep that we have on our team, how much pipeline they currently have at each stage in our sales process. So let's go into our interfaces and I've created an interface, we want to add a new page to this interface and make sure that this is a dashboard because this is where the pivot table itself is supported. We'll go ahead and choose for the table. We're going to use our opportunities. We can go ahead and press finish. Now from here, we don't really care about the chart that it creates for us. So we'll remove that and we can remove this number here as well. We titled this pipeline by rep and now you'll see there's this option to add a pivot table. We'll go ahead and click on that. And by default, this is going to open up based on the table that we've already selected. And it's just going to put in some values, both for the rows and the columns. This doesn't necessarily match our use case. So we'll want to tweak this. So of course you can add filters here if you only want to show some of the data. Maybe you only want to show opportunities for this current quarter. We could add a filter here for the rows and columns. In my rows, I want to be able to have my different sales reps. Let's go ahead and choose the owner name to display here. So we've got our different opportunity owners or the sales reps. And then here we've got our priority. This is where we wanna change the priority instead to be the status or the stage of our opportunities. Great, so we can see this. You can already see that it is counting up those opportunities here. Instead of showing the count of the opportunities, under appearance, we could change this to be a field. So we could do this by estimated value if we want to show the revenue amounts, which would probably be more relevant in our use case. And one of the features that I really love is that we can click to see underlying records. We'll leave this toggled on, which means if we're looking at Casey Park and we wanna see what closed opportunity revenue he had this quarter, we can click and expand. And this is now going to show on the side the actual opportunities that are part of that pivot table. Next, let's do an inventory management or e-commerce or order tracking example. So here we've got a number of purchase orders and for the purchase orders, we have products. The products are produced by these manufacturers. They have different product numbers. There's prices and quantities attached to these. And let's say that we want to identify which manufacturers we're buying a lot of these goods from. So we want to run some kind of report and see the manufacturers and how much we're buying from them over time. This is another perfect use case for a pivot table. So let's go ahead and add this again by clicking to add the pivot table. And for our columns this time, we want this to be time series data. So we're going to go ahead and change our columns to be based on the order date. So now we can see the order dates across and then on the left hand side going down for our rows instead of status, this is where we're going to want the manufacturer. Now, one thing that you'll notice with these dates is that we have a lot of different dates. And so there's a lot of scrolling to do. And that's because we're pulling the order date directly from the order. There's no kind of summarization or aggregation here. So back in our data, let's improve this a little bit. Instead of just having the order date, I added a formula field here for order month. And we're doing this date time format. We're taking the order date field that we have and now we're saying, let's output this in the year and month format so that it looks like this, which means instead of having every single day's worth of orders, now we could have it by month. And we could do this by other groupings as well if we wanted to go by week or by quarter instead. So back in the interface, let's change that column instead of that order date to be our new formula field of order month. And this now looks a little bit more consolidated, which is easy to see. Now we could of course say, let's change this instead of just the count of the orders or the order lines, that probably doesn't work quite as well for us. So this time let's change this to a field and we've got different options here. We could go by the quantity, how many products are we buying? And we could have that summarized or we could go by the revenue amount. If we want to see the order total, what do we call this here? The total price and we could view that as well. So 
we can see whatever metric it is that's important to see. And as always, we can click to expand those records as well. For our last example, let's do a project management one. So we've got a number of different tasks that people on our team are working on. And so this time we wanna see tasks by resource and by status. So let's add that pivot table. We'll have our rows be our assignees. Our columns are going to be our status. And this time we're fine keeping this as a count because unlike the revenue objects we were looking at before, I think it makes sense for tasks to take a look at this and see how many tasks. We could do number of hours if we wanted to, but we'll leave this as the count. You probably have lots of ideas on how you can now use pivot tables in your own reporting. If you have any questions on getting set up with Airtable, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations. Look, look.